Good evening. We warmly welcome you to the Gratian Prize 2019 shortlist event. It is the time of the year to celebrate creative writing, literature, and publishing in Sri Lanka. We have an exciting sequence of events coming your way. And now we have a short message from John Keel's Foundation, the primary sponsor of the Gratian Trust. Each year, the Gratian Trust appoints a panel of judges, including a creative writer, an informed reader, and an academic. For the second consecutive year, the Gratian Trust announced a long list of seven writers. Now, let's hear what they have to say about their work. Well, COVID-19, wow, a lot of things have, everything has been impacted by COVID-19. I mean, even the Gratian Awards, we are doing it in a different way this year. Because the planet has gone through this thing um, almost together, you know, there, there's very rare that you get so many humans in the world uh, having a very similar experience to each other at the same time. And I think there, I mean, I'm sure writers and, and artists of all description will come out with, with stories um, that will be told in the next uh, few years. The importance of a writer or a creative um, person in this particular period, uh, post-COVID, <laughs> during COVID, pandemic times, is um, we've sort of come to terms with the fact that these people are the ones that keep us sane because even people who were very technically um, motivated went back to books or movies or poetry during this particular time. A writer's role at the end of the day is just to bring someone joy, to give them that little bit of uh, excitement at the end of the day and uh, I also think that it's to you know spread ideas and to Give, spread a message. What generally inspires me to write is, is reading good writing uh, and kind of having good writing fire off ideas in my own head. The main thing that inspires me as a writer is I think uh, my two children. So I started writing children's books inspired 100% by what my kids did and said as they were growing up. So my writing is generally poetry so it's like a collection that I didn't actually think I'd put together in the first place because uh, I always wrote my poems for myself. So writing is a kind of a commitment um, I have uh, to myself. It's an urge. And uh, if there are readers who would like to tag along, that's totally fine. That's totally welcome. The inspiration for this book is coming from my um, uh, idea that a Buddhist monk does not have to be ideal as many people expect uh, him to be. I'd always wanted to travel around Sri Lanka and, uh, and kind of explore it for myself. Uh, and this book was an attempt to, to try and go to parts of the country that you know, haven't had travelers for a long time and, and discover things and, and work out how the history of those areas kind of resonate with the present. What inspires me generally is usually something like an experience I just had or some personal thing that impacted me in some way. Much of my writing is topical. It's uh, seeped in context. Um, that's predominantly because I draw a lot of my inspiration from my own life, the lives of people around me, the kind of struggles and conflicts that are very much a part of my reality. So I saw this beautiful fantasy art on social media. I contacted the artist and his work inspired me to look for a story that would be compatible with what he was doing. And that was the beginning of Ravana's Daughter. For me, 
to write poetry, the inspiration um, comes from things that confuse me most of the time. And um, it doesn't necessarily have to confuse me, but anything that uh, bothers me, anything that I'm trying to come to terms with is what inspires me. For this book in particular, it's kind of a culmination of everything that I had in my, uh, of all of the ideas that I had. So the ones that stood out the most to me were what ended up as this book. I don't like to put a book together in a chronological order, like in the olden days. I like to write a, a current story with the flashbacks. It was my first manuscript. I hadn't put together anything before. This is unpublished. It was just a manuscript version. I wasn't sure if it was edited enough or I had done enough to make it, you know, good. My writing process is, is very haphazard. Uh, it relies very much on inspiration. Um, I think when you're writing a first book as well, it's a little bit tougher because you have to, you know, you very rarely get the opportunity to just focus on writing the book. You have to do a day job as well. Uh, in addition to that, so with this one, I was uh, very much working kind of full days and, and writing either very late into the night from something like 11 to 4 a.m. or waking up at 3 a.m. And, and writing in the morning before I went and, uh, and you know, either covered a test match or, or, or did my normal job for Crick Info. I have so many other things that I need to juggle that it's very difficult to find the time to write. Uh, so my writing process actually is a bit weird where I have to stop mid-sentence and go and pick up a child from school and then come back and try to figure out where I was and where the sentence ends. I like writing mostly uh, late in the night. Uh, I find that at about that time is when like most of my ideas are there and I can flesh them out properly. Uh, when it comes to my editing process, so what I usually do is I think up some random concept or like a couple of lines and usually this happens right before I fall asleep and so I will myself to remember it by next morning or if I have my phone nearby or like a pen and a paper nearby I sometimes start it down not often uh, so if I do remember it by the next morning or a couple of days later I go back to it and see if I can you know build on it and turn it into a poem that may make sense. Uh, I do a lot of uh, rewritings uh, sometimes manuscripts go uh, to 10 or 12 drafts. Uh, this uh, novel I published uh, back in 2011 went into 16 drafts. In addition to that, um, that kind of writing process, uh, it's always a kind of a slightly complex mechanism. Um, I have for myself, uh, for instance, a fairly reliable editor who would go through the manuscript once everything is done. I write mainly for children. And something that I have noticed in children's literature and also English literature in general that is available in Sri Lanka is that we have a lot of books that come from abroad, uh, from US, UK, maybe even Australia. But there is very little um, that is set in Sri Lanka, written by Sri Lankan authors in English. Well, I think the audience that an English writer can approach in Sri Lanka is a very limited audience. Like even if you take newspapers, there's like a clear divide between those, the readership for English newspapers and the readership for Sinhala or Tamil newspapers. So I think we approach a limited population. English is probably the least read language, you know, if you talk about languages that are read in Sri Lanka, but also one that commands kind of a lot of uh, market value and economics and there's kind of a, a disparity there and I think it's important for, for writers who write in English to be aware of those privileges and to use that privilege in a way that maybe helps diversify uh, writing in Sri Lanka that helps writers in other languages kind of grow. Looking at it from a distance I think there's no problem or there is no particular reason why I should choose a language if English is what I'm comfortable in, that is what I'm going to write. Writing in English for a Sri Lankan audience, I find that it's much easier to do that uh, than writing to a, um, a foreign audience because most of my characters and incidents are based in Sri Lanka. No matter what you write, if it's, if it's good, if you write well, uh, that it will be universal. When I first found out that 
I had been selected for the Grecian long list. I felt extremely honored. And, uh, and it's because it's such a respected panel of adjudicators that have judged my book and have decided that, that it's good. And that felt very special. Being long listed or short listed for the Grecian Awards, I mean, it's like climbing Mount Everest, getting to the peak. Um, in, in the context of Sri Lankan English literature. Um, so I hope that in the future I will be able to improve my writing and this gives me that, that boost to do that. I think the Gratian Trust particularly is um, a place that any budding writer who's writing in English looks to, um, wants to be uh, acknowledged or um, to be part of, because I think that gives them that um, platform. It's a huge privilege to be uh, long listed for the Gratian Prize. Uh, I've, many of my favorite authors have been involved or been nominated or, or won the award in, in previous years. And uh, it's uh, obviously a huge thrill uh, to be part of it this year. Now let's hear from the judges about their process. And now to the shortlist announcement. Over to Jake Olaf to present the citations and the shortlist. I'm Jake Olaf, and I'm one of the three judges for the Gratian Prize 2019. The shortlist is as follows. For its clarity of vision and purpose, for the skilled use of language and the device of humor, a work that disguises itself as a travel companion, all the while distilling countless experiences and anecdotes to elevate it as a work of creative and literary distinction. Andrew Fidel Fernando's published travelogue, Upon a Sleepless Isle. For its ambitious and colorful presentation of new fantastical worlds through the character of a child, its imaginative plot buildup, and its attempt to present to young readers complex ideas through metaphor and imagery. The published adventure tale for young readers by Praveen Jayamana the Double Doorway. For its richly imagined story and clarity of language, its formal restraint and subtle power, the novel's sensitive engagement with class and caste in contemporary Sri Lankan culture, its exploration of complex themes of identity, sexuality, and religion, and its attempt to locate that which is most true and most human. Upali Mahalina's novel in manuscript Tom Tom Boy. For its refined craftsmanship and economy of language, its presentation of deep human emotions that is at once both individual and universal, its skillful handling of a range of themes from the intimate to the political, its grappling with Sri Lanka's unsettling past and exploring the cruelties of the present day with poignant simplicity, the three collections of poetry presented in one volume Vihanga Pereira's entry in manuscript, sentimental pieces, private funeral, the classical war poems. And here's Professor Nelu Fadimel, the chair of the Gratian Trust, to propose the vote of thanks. On behalf of the Gratian Trust, I want to warmly congratulate all four writers who have been shortlisted this year. Andrew Fidel Fernando, Pras Praveen Jayamana, Upali Mahalyana, and Vihanga Pereira. Upali Mahalyana was actually shortlisted last year and Vihanga Pereira won the Gratian Prize in 2014. So it is wonderful to see both of them in contention again for this year's prize. But we're also delighted that two new writers, new to us that is, have joined the shortlist, Andrew Fidel Fernando and Praveen Jayamana. Good luck to all of you. I also want to take this opportunity to thank many people without whose support this event would not have taken place. First, all of the writers who submitted their entries for this year's prize. Without your continued interest in the Gratian, 
we would not have been able to do this and your support is a great encouragement to us. John Keel's Foundation, with whom we closely work in association. The Vijay Group, our media partner. The Daily Mirror Online team, which facilitated, recorded, edited and streamed this event. The three judges of the 2019 Gratian Prize, Professor Minoli Salgadu, Jake Olof and Tara Kumaraswamy, for painstakingly going through all of the entries and selecting the long list and now this short list. To Delan Veerasinghe, who voluntarily stepped in to give his creative insights and provide a visual coherence to this event. The Little Black Book for its designs for the backdrop, the advertisements and the trust video. To End to End, which helped with all the coordination. And finally, last but not least, to you, the viewers who watched our event online. I hope in some way that it has inspired you to turn to literature more, either as writers or readers or both. We will be having two more events associated with this year's prize, a panel discussion with the shortlisted writers on the 27th of June and the final announcement of the winner on the 4th of July. So please continue to stay with us and watch these events. Congratulations to our shortlisted writers. If you do have any questions for them, send it to us through our Facebook page as we are having a panel discussion on the 27th. Once again, thank you so much for engaging with us today. And please do join us on the 27th for the panel discussion and also on the 4th of July for the announcement of the winner.